says, how do we know something is from God and not a result of chance or favored probabilities? Wow. Um, I would say that we, we can know that it's from God if um, we've been, um, I would say probably like seeking it or um, praying for it. Um, it really just depends on what it is, but um, I just know that like um, that we'll like have the favor upon us. So um, whatever thing that we desire, um, that it will be from God. Um, but in order to differentiate, I'm not really sure. Thank you for God bless you, lovey. And I want to contribute on that. How do we know um. if something's from God? That I give to or whatever it is. I know some scriptures, but I don't know. I don't still know how they like really. It says like every good and perfect gift is from God, from above, the Father of lights. But sometimes, like for example, one of my friends, she's been getting all these like things that everyone else is not getting. And she's like, oh, I know it's God, but then it's like, how has it happened to me? So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another contribution. Comes to me, he says, Which of you will give your children stones when he asks for bread? Right. Give him a snake instead of a fish. So it's kind of like God is giving, so we're his children. So because we're his, like a father to his son, you always bring gifts for your children. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like that. Okay. All right. What I want else want to contribute? I think this has to do, the way I always look at this type of question is it depends on your worldview. And as a Christian, because I believe everybody, if you're in church, I'm assuming you're a Christian. So I think when you start arguing about how do I know that this is from God, and then how do I know this is a chance? The Bible says even God make chance to happen. So what you are calling chance, everything is in the hands of God. Everything is ordered by God. Everything is, I mean, the worst story that is in the Bible is the story of Job. And at the beginning of that story, we were actually made to understand that God was in the business. It was not without the knowledge of God that whatever happened to Job happened. So we know that God was in the entire process. And that's why the Bible says in the book of uh, Pro, uh, uh, Romans that even the things that the devil meant for good, God has the divine understanding and knowledge of how to make it to our good, how to turn it to our good. That is, if you are working according to the will of God. So my thing is, as a Christian, take whatever happens to you, even things that you think is bad. Because what you think is bad, you might not know. Maybe, okay, let's say you have, okay, there was a story of a man. So he was, he wanted to fly, he's traveling somewhere, and by, I mean, somehow, somehow, I think maybe there was like a traffic or something, he missed the flight. And the flight happened to crash. So all I'm saying is at that particular moment when this guy missed his flight, I mean, I think he felt very bad because he had paid for it, and if you, are, if you buy economy, you are not going to get your money back. So all I'm saying is we have to, it depends on the way you look at things. And when you start questioning, is this just chance? Is this just God? Then you've lost, I think you are missing a particular right. point. And all that's, right. so look at everything that is from that God. All right, it's the Lord. Bab says all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Okay. Now, this is the first thing that needs to be addressed. I need to be sure that I'm in right attitude in relationship with God when that is cleared. Then I do not need to worry about anything. Uh, Jesus, the first part, the very first message he was given was issue of anxiety. He said, uh, it's sufficient for the day the evil they are of. Do not be anxious for anything. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it means that anxiety will want to come and bring himself in. Like challenges of the day can come and give us some misconceptions about what God plans for us. But we are told clearly that we don't need to worry. Amen? We don't need to worry. We don't need to worry. But this thing I need to add, that some things 
as litmus test to know, to make this question very obviously answered, clearly answered. Number one, when, it talk, when you talk about uh, how do we know that things is actually from God, it's not from the Satan, because the angel of darkness, we are told in the scripture, sometimes appear as the angel of light to present themselves as if they are coming from God. It's the same way the devil came to Adam and Eve and say, as God said, he manipulated them, he presented himself as good advisor and distract them from the concern that God put them to be responsible for. Hallelujah. Now, here it is. Anything that comes from God will bring peace. Amen. It will be concern. It will bring concern in your head. Hey, listen, I've got to clarify that very well. It can bring concerns into your head. That's why the Bible says, do not worry. Okay, because it brings concerns into your flesh. It might be embarrassing. It might be confusing. It might be a storm. Okay, like I said, I make sure I bet in the lake of fire. They experienced fire. There was storm. That was persecution against Daniel before King Nebuchadnezzar uh, and better assassin, right? So there was issues with Daniel, with all the kings, the, the, the Nebuchadnezzar and his son and that king. There was issues, right? But Daniel refused to be agitated, even when he was thrown into, into the, uh, in the midst of the lion. You, you, you heard what the Bible says about that? He kept calm, and the lion obeyed. <laughs> Obey the voice of the Lord, not to what? Not to hurt Daniel. So our brain could be, could be having issues. Then we are to use, what about Jesus is saying, use your heart to control your brain. Amen. Once you find peace in your heart, do not worry about what goes on in your brain. Amen. It will bring peace, number one. Number two, whatever comes from God, you might not have, if it's a vision, you might not have enough resources to be able to accomplish it. If, it, if a vision comes from God, you will be, all your resources are too limited to accomplish it. I'm just telling you now, when your vision is from God, it's greater than your thoughts, than you. That's how you know it's from God. When you look at the left, you can't find a way to get it done. You can't find it. You know, people, okay, people come in mass, 1,000 people, one time. They one day, they just disappear. You don't understand what's going on. You know God is in control. Amen. You can't understand it. That's number two. Number three. When something is from God, it will not make any rational sense. What do I say? It will not make any rational sense. We are told, I shall ask the king to go and to go and wash his body, his leprous body, in the river, dirty river. And the man said, mm -mm. As, as, as big as I am, to go and wash my body in a very dirty, smelly river? I won't do that. But the servant said, okay, go and try. What about if you have demanded money and treasures from you? Wouldn't you have given him? And just humbly went there, and the leprosy went away. What the man of God told him was not making sense, right? And I was you were the prophet that found death in the pot. And what did the man of God, what he did was ridiculous. That the death was taken out of the pot. Remember one in the head of a house was in a river, falling into a river, in a river, deep down. And then the man of God was not making sense by actually, how can you make a house to float and upon the river? What did he do? He used a stick, dip it down, and he just, that's what, those things that doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. Bible says the gospel it's actually, uh, they are foolish unto them that are not saved. So, whatever is from God, is not always making sense. So, worry not. Amen. Amen. Worry not. Worry not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, another thing I'm going to say about this is that uh, whatever comes from God, accomplishing it is for the purpose of giving God's glory. Yeah. So, God wants to take you out of the picture. If God gives you something... And it's kind of we are wondering, push it back to God. Why what did you give me this? Why? We went out and ministered the gospel, preach the gospel, people are not responding. Let's go back to God. Amen. Let's what? <laughs> Apostle Paul was ministering in the place and they rejected him. They were actually cursing him and doing stuff. They don't listen. He got angry, took it personal. That's why I said, don't take the word of God as personal. I told this sister when we started, about two of us are there and them and my wife. 
Never take. He said, I call them, I call them. No one is responding. I called the phone. The phone just ring, and then it went to whatever it is. And I just go, I'm so oh Lord. I said, okay, keep calling. I said, keep calling. calling. Now, did you call now, this week? Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> keep calling. Keep calling. There is a pregnancy in war delivery. God has a way of using the word you drop in their phone to convict them. Amen. Amen. That's not your job. Don't take it personal. And Paul was very angry. He was very angry. He said, I am going to leave this town. I'm done with you. And your blood will be upon your head. And he went angry. And God appeared to him in the dream. The only ghost told him in the dream. He said, hey, go back there. I have never finished my work over there. You need to go there because people do not need to be safe are still there. Hallelujah. And mind you, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nobody will touch the hair of your head. I preserve you. Just go in there back again. Amen. In the midst of danger. All right. So when this comes from God, you might be facing the one of the greatest embarrassment of your life, but don't take it personal. Hallelujah. Everybody say, don't take it personal. When the devil sees you that you are taking things that comes around personal, they will begin to provoke you more. Provoke you more. To pick around that say, this guy get this out of everything. Okay, let me provoke him more. But when you withdraw yourself away from confusion and say, Lord, I push the thing to you. You know what? God will tell people who shall serve on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. They are coming. Yeah. A time shall come in this campus. We are this place. Will be a solution center for everyone in the city. In the city. Everybody say, in the city. Why shall our help come from? Our help shall come from the law, the creator of the heavens and the earth. When I pray that prayer, don't put your head down. Because it's not your responsibility. Put your head up. Everybody say, it shall come to pass. Very soon. Oh, you're not talking. Rest on your feet. Rest on your feet. Rest on your feet right now. I'm going to make that confession. Don't put your head down. Don't put your head down. This is not your job. This is not your job. Was it our job when we were talking about it in the, in the fellowship? Two of us. We spoke to God. It's not your job. Amen. It's not what? It's not my job. Ah. They said nobody can deliver the young in the community. God of deliverance. Amen. He will deliver. He will give vision. Amen. Hallelujah. You will see vibrancy. Amen. What your eyes have never seen before, you will see it happening in America with the young people like you. On fire, on fire, on fire, on fire. God brought me all the way from Africa. Appear to me, my dream. And he said, Go and warn my people back to me. Hallelujah. God is about to do a new thing. Hallelujah. Open your eyes and put your eyes up. Don't close your eyes. Just put your eyes up. Amen. Lord, thank you. Say that with me. Lord, thank you. It shall come to pass. For the mountain of the Lord's house here shall be highly exalted above every other mountain. And many people of different nations, diversities shall flow into it. They will find solution into their problem. You will be the solution in this campus via this fellowship unto many. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have declared your word. Come on, have your seat confidently. Next question. Number 21.